Welcome to Beyond the Build, a new series from Shopify where we share stories behind the Shopify ecosystem, a platform where founders, developers, and innovators come to build for more than 1.7 million merchants worldwide. And on the show today, we have Yvonne Bojoli, the co-founder and CEO of Bold Commerce. Bold Commerce is a software development company that provides industry-leading e-commerce solutions for the world's most innovative brands. What started out as a side hustle for a group of friends in 2013 turned into a huge Canadian success story. Today, Bold has grown to over 385 employees, over 90,000 customers, and just recently raised $27 million in funding. Yvonne, thanks so much for joining me today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Super excited to hear your story. So uh, Bold is one of like the OG uh, companies on, that have built on Shopify. You've got a lot of apps in the App Store. Um, you've been with Shopify for a very, very long time. So Take me back to the very beginning. Like, what um, what inspired you to start the business, and what made you decide to invest all that energy into Shopify, which at the time was probably not very well known. Yeah, yeah, no, I I I, I like to think so. I think we're we're one of the OGs. I you know I, I think back of totally. all the people that we used to uh, hang out with. I mean, we were we were there. You know, I guess it's 2012. So um, not right from the beginning, but uh, it's been it's been a wild ride watching Shopify grow. So. Um, yeah, no, when we uh, when we started, we actually so I don't know how many people know this, but we, you know, all the founders kind of grew up in, in this entrepreneurial spirit kind of parents were all owned their own businesses. And, um, you know, I think we all had this aspiration to build our own companies and not to go into the, the weeds of prior to bold. But we had these really interesting kind of stories of how we all tried to build our own products, our own business. Um, bold to me is really four different people with four completely different strengths coming together and finding, you know, I, I when I, whenever I advise people starting a, a business, it's find those people that compliment you. Like you don't, don't shy away from bringing the right people in. They're just going to make you better. And, and that to me is what bold is. I mean, you, you look at the four people that came in all different, different walks of life, all, you know, have different skill sets and, but everybody, every one of us had a passion to build a company. Um, and so that's really how it started. And, and, you know, we, we all kind of bailed at prior, prior, you know, tries. And, um, when we started bold, it actually started with an e-commerce store. We, we were, we were e-commerce owners. We, you know, we were merchants. So, um, you know, when, when the idea came to, Hey, we're on Shopify. So, so just so everyone knows, Jay, Jay's actually the one that, so if you don't know, Jay is one of the founders, uh, he actually owned an e, uh, e-commerce store, Supreme Archery, um, and, he came to us and just kind of asked, Hey, you know, we're, I'm on Shopify. There's this opportunity to use APIs and build, you know, be, uh, build some apps on top of it and make our, make my store more money. Uh, are you guys in? And at the time, you know, we, we were all trying different things, uh, and, and weren't, we didn't shy away from the extra workload. And it was like, what, what's another, let's, let's try this thing. And so just a, a side hustle and, um, you know, going back to Shopify back then, I believe when we were talking about joining Shopify, maybe the numbers were outdated, but on the website, I think you guys were at around 20,000 merchants. Right. Some apps in the ecosystem, all backend apps. It was all more integration apps. Uh, no apps were there to make you more money. I mean, that was, there was nothing like right. that. It was all, you know, integrate to QuickBooks, integrate to your backend systems. Um, and that's that's really how we took it. So we, we kind of flipped it on its head a little bit on, on how to approach building products in the, the ecosystem. Um, and it was really what we tried to do was just, you know, again, make more money for the for our store and, uh, right. you know, started started building one app at a time. You had some of the original um, uh, front end apps, to your point, like when you think about like the full stack that you see in the in the ecosystem and, and kind of the different categories, like everything that's kind of connected to helping merchants reach customers or um, sell like the, the front end of, of that experience. Uh, I think you guys were the, were like the first in a lot of those areas. Yeah, so our, our first app was Upsell. The reason we picked Upsell was because we thought it'd be simple. Um, you know, we were just like, you know, what's you buy a product, we'll we'll push a different product, and and you know, we thought a little pop up, pretty simple way to start, you know, learning about the the platform and and get out there. But the APIs aren't what they are today, right? They were they weren't designed really for that front end experience, um, and so it was it was a little hacky how we did it, but we ended up doing it. It took a lot longer than we thought, um, you know than we thought it was not like we took us too long to get something out um but as we started learning and improving the product we were like okay well it's, you know this is a little bit hacky how this works and um but we got through it and and 
from then on, it was kind of like, wow, we can really impact how our merchants succeed. And, and that was really what fueled it. And, and once we saw the, the, the results for our own store, you know, it was kind of like, what else can we do? And so, you know, product discount was the next one. Um, I believe quantity breaks was the third one. Anyways, and then from there, just kind of, you know, what are all these products that we can help our stores make more money? And, uh, and in the end, awesome. our merchants that we work with. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty incredible also that at the time there was 20,000 merchants. Now there's 1.7 million merchants. So I think the market size feels a lot more obvious. But what was it at that time that made all four of you sort of decide like, OK, you know, it might be 20,000 merchants now, but this is the platform we want to double down on. And this is where we want to invest our entrepreneurial energy. Yeah. So so true story. This is how it actually went down. Um, again, I think it, it, it partly has to do with we all had a passion for building a company. Right. And, and so, you know, regardless of what the outcome was, the, the how big it can get, it wasn't really what was driving. It was like, hey, we can make an impact in, in this market. Um, right. and, and we were thinking about how to make our store more money. Um, but when we started it, we, the, we actually talked about, you know, it's, it's a small platform. It's like 20,000 merchants. How fast can it grow? How fast can we grow on it? Uh, and we decided to do it because we said, you know what, if it could pay for beer money or we can tr- pay for one trip a year to Mexico, That'd be worth it. <laughs> that was that was that was, a, that was all that we was were the expecting. Bar. That was the bar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we wanted that trip to Mexico. We're from Winnipeg. We want to get out once in a while, um, and, and so that's that's how you know the conversation went. And then uh, and then from there, I mean, obviously the, the platform kept on growing. But what made us focus solely on Shopify at the beginning was uh, I remember it was our, our first trip out. So we had started development April 2012. Uh, Back then, Blair um, invited us to Shopify headquarters. This was January 2013. So we've been building for about eight months. I think there was about five apps in the app store. Um, and, and I call it the, the Blair Beckwith effect. I mean, I, I think that experience that we went to Shopify um, for that first time, I think, I think we were sold on Shopify at that point. We were, we actually, we were at that point, we were talking about, hey, what other platforms do we move our products to? And I think just seeing the entrepreneurship within the company, what was happening, uh, you know, built great relationships uh, and seeing where the company was going. We we left Ottawa. We came back to Winnipeg, sold. We were like, no, this is it. We got to focus on, right. on on this platform. Um, and yeah, so that was uh, yeah, that was that was really the beginning and why we focused solely on Shopify from then on. So it was uh, I guess we were right. Uh, we, we definitely <laughs> were able yeah. to read the room. And- was it- yeah, you saw the magic in the in that one trip, which is which is pretty awesome. Okay, so now you're like you're bought in. You're like we're going to invest in Shopify. Let's go, uh, full swing ahead. And there's four of you running the company. And and you mentioned before, like all of you kind of bring different skill sets. I know all of you are really good friends. Um, how has that been? Like I I you know it's it's not that common to have I think four founders. You you see a lot of like a lot of like maybe two to three. How is the dynamic been you all have been together for so long which is amazing um what are some of like the lessons learned and what's the secret sauce behind those relationships and and again going back to you know bringing people that complement your skill set and, and elevate you i mean i would anybody thinking about building a company you have to think about you have to be true you have to understand what you bring and, and your skills and and you have to find partners that complement you so that by far the best move I think we ever did. And, and the reason why I think all the other ideas we had before never actually amounted to anything, right? It was I mean, a great experience and everything, but it didn't really, uh, they didn't do, do much. But I think what, what really came together with Bold was just we were all bringing something different and unique. Um, but it's hard. It, it, it is hard. We, we were friends before we started Bold. Um, you know, happy to say we're still friends. But you go through a lot. You go through a lot as partners, as people building a company. You don't always agree. Uh, we didn't really have. Actually, I actually like the fact that we were four. I think it forced us always to get three people on board uh, whenever there was a d- disagreement. So it just it pushed us to, you know, argue for the many argue the, the, the point more, uh, which I think was good. It, it helped us kind of stretch a little bit more. Um, but yeah, like, like it's, it's something you have to, you have to go in. Everybody has to be committed, passionate, um, and, and willing to put as much effort as the next. And it's like, a, it's, it's like a marriage. I mean, it's, it's, you, you take it for what it is and, and, and you, you, you sometimes, sometimes it's, 
um, you know, it, it's it's about building that that relationship with for a long term relationship, and you have to go in with that mindset. You have to build a right. long term relationship. It's not I'm gonna I'm gonna get you know I'm gonna bring you in as a partner, and then I get pissed off and it's over. Um, right. And and so I think if you go in with that attitude, where it's like you realize that you're going in for the long term with these people. Um, you have to make it work. And so, you know, you'll have arguments and those arguments are great. You, you need to have those arguments. Um, right. and, and I think as long as everybody respects each other uh, and, and, and pushes everybody just elevate, right? It's about bringing everybody up and then you're doing it for the right reasons and, and everything. And, and so I, I, you know, I'm, I'm thrilled that, you know, we're obviously still friends and, um, you know, not, not to say it was, it was a rough ride, but it, it's difficult. It's, it's something that you, yeah, you have to Yeah, it's not, it's not like, it's not like roses all the time and it doesn't just magically happen. It takes effort and intention to, uh, to build that kind of, and maintain that type of like respect and trust throughout. Right. Totally. Yeah. So you, you just got to go in eyes wide open. This is somebody I need to build this business. Won't always agree, but respect each other and we're going to make this work. And that's, that's really how you got to approach it. So. I love that. And I mean, congrats on, on on that itself, because I think, you know, you're an awesome team of four that very clearly complement each other. And uh, and it, it's it's just great to see that dynamic. It's it's really awesome. Um, so, OK, so tell me a little bit about like what what was the moment where things started to really take off, where you're like, this is going to be something big. We're on to something. Um, and, you know, was it like one of your products, because I know, you know, for for the folks who are who are watching, um, uh, your strategy has been to have a portfolio of products as opposed to really investing in one um, one key product. So, a like, you know, was there something behind that decision? And and b like, yeah, what was the moment that it that things started to take off? Yeah, I, I think you have to appreciate where we came from. So we we were building products for a user base of twenty thousand, maybe right. by after the first year is forty thousand. Um, so it was the, the more apps we had, the more chance we had to get more users. And right. that was really the, that's why I think we built a company like companies coming in now, they're coming in with one, you know, focus. They're, they're going to be the S the, the best of breed of that, that industry or that, that app. Um, and you're, you're coming into a market of 1.7 million merchants. Right. Um, so there's, there's plenty of room, right? So. I think we came in at a very different time than everybody else. So I think the strategy that we had actually worked for what we had to do at that time. Uh, I think somebody coming in today, coming in with that strategy will be way more difficult because now you're you're competing right. with a lot of best of breeds in all these different buckets that, that we're in. Um, so yeah, so I mean, I, I think just so everybody knows, I mean, I, I, I believe that's why we became the company that we became where we have, you know, at, at one point, I think we had 36 different products on the in the app store. Uh, yeah. and, and now I think we've got about 20. So we, again, it's, it's one of those things. What are we focusing on? What are we going to be the best at? And that's, that's really the mind, the, the, the shift, the focus that we had to make was what do we want to be known for? And we had to make some, some hard decisions to make sure. And I think that's part of the innovation that we built, which is, which is great understanding that to innovate, you got to fail and to, and when you fail, you move on, you, you sunset and you build something better. Right. So, um, right. When did we find out or when did we think we were succeeding on something? I don't You know what? To be honest, I think we always felt that way from the start. Um, we had some pretty consistent. We were bootstrapped from the beginning. So not to say we were making tons of money, but we were paying our salaries and, and we were growing and we were hiring people. And um, I think we always felt, wow, we're we're on to something big. I think it was probably three years in where we realized we can we can be more than what we're doing. Like we, I think we, we built an identity of, we built apps for Shopify. Um, I think about three years in, we're like, well, you know what, we, we could be leaders in the e-commerce space and we can really help merchants succeed in the different areas that we focus in. Um, and that's, I think I would say three years, uh, three years into the business, we started talking about, you know, do we want to be a lifestyle company, a gazelle company. Uh, and at that point, I think is when we, we made that call. We're like, let's go all in. Um, let's fuel this thing. Let's put all our money back in. So again, it was bootstrapped. Every money we made, every dollar we made, we just put right back into the company, and it just kind of fueled our, our growth from there. And then as we started to, you know, realize that you, we needed help, you know, again, four founders. You know, our, our I always say our AGMs were a, a bottle of, of whiskey in the basement, and that was <laughs> that was how we operated. Um, so we knew we needed to step up to get to that level. Uh, and so that's, you know, at that point we saw opportunity to continue growing and, and we brought in investors and independent board. 
Um, and, and obviously the company has been maturing since then, but what's cool about that too, though, is that you totally could have decided to stay bootstrap, like to stay, um, you know, to not raise money because it, it sounds like you all were like, you know, you were, you were becoming profitable just on the revenue that you were making. Right. And so, um, it, it like, I think it's, it's interesting because when people look at the ecosystem today, there's so much, you know, uh, venture activity happening, like between investments and acquisitions and, and all that stuff. Um, but there's also a healthy amount of companies that are just like profitable businesses um, that haven't raised money, but that are doing really well, creating a lot of value. And that's completely like, you know, um, a path that can be taken and successfully, especially in the world of SaaS, right? Which is not always the case in like, I wish for every founder to to have a bootstrap company. Like if if you can if you could learn those experiences, then when you go and raise money, you will be ready for that. And and I think that's one side that I, I'm I'm happy we went down. I, I mean, I, I don't think we went down this path on purpose. I, I we we're from Winnipeg, not you know, I, the exposure to VC or to capital, you don't really get it. You don't there's no real stories of other companies doing it. Um, and so we were just, we were winning, winning it in this, this, this city that, that, you know, you, there's nobody really to look up to. I mean, back in 2012, right. there wasn't any, uh, companies. So, uh, we were all kind of doing it on our own as we, as we matured and, and, you know, started talking to people outside of Winnipeg and started getting familiar with <laughs> that world. Um, you yeah. know, this became a little bit easier of a decision, but yeah, that's, that's awesome. Um, and okay. So where, where you're at now, like what's ahead for bold? Like, what are you most excited about in this new sort of frontier that you're in? Yeah. I, I, and again, I think, um, I think it's about bringing in the right, the, the, the surrounding ourselves with the best people. Um, so, uh, you know, we've expanded our office. Um, we've got some amazing talent coming in from Austin, Calgary, Toronto now, um, uh, kind of rounding out our, our team, which has been great. Um, but we, we kind of took the same steps as Shopify. I mean, I like to think we've been highly influenced by Shopify through our culture. Um, you know, a lot of the decisions that we're, we're going through, um, you know, we were the first ones to move with Shopify to Shopify plus. And so we started maturing as a company from making that transition from SMB to enterprise. I'd still say we're going through that transition. I, I like that's, that's the part of the right. business that, that, uh, we've been, we've been working on it, but but really to take that next step into enterprise, um, that's where we've been bringing in some some great talent. And, um, you know, I think that's going to be somewhere an area that we're going to be focused on uh, in the future. So uh, stay tuned for that. But yeah, that's uh, stay tuned. I mean, we're, we're already doing it, but um, a lot more interesting things happening in, in that space. But yeah, so so hopefully helping kind of the SMB market, but also, you know, as you scale again, being there for you during that journey and, and helping, you know, large enterprise and retail and I think that's a space that's pretty exciting right now too. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's there's so much uh, there's there's so much on both sides, and there's so much in between. Because like, I think watching um, merchant scale and go through the journey of like be, from starting as an entrepreneur and getting into that enterprise space, like that journey is what's is what's really fun to to sort of watch and be there for them throughout the whole thing, right? Um, which you guys do as well. So that's awesome. Um, what advice would you give? So, you know, we've got a lot of new developers interested in the Shopify ecosystem, lots of folks building companies. Um, and, you know, like you said before, because there's now 1.7 million merchants, there's so much opportunity, like the diversity of the merchant base keeps growing, which opens up more and more opportunity for developers to solve problems. What advice would you give someone joining the ecosystem today? Yeah, somebody in the technology space um, getting into, you know, building e-commerce products. I don't, I don't think, I don't know if there's a more exciting space, like the amount of uh, the acceleration in user adoption in the technology, like even that side with COVID, I mean, COVID's kind of even changed that game. So what, totally. yeah, what a consumer expects now is so different than what he was a year ago. Um, how they behave, how they want to shop is changed since a year ago. And so I think there's just so much opportunity that's actually just opened up in the last you know, six to 12 months that, I totally agree. yeah, like if you've got an idea, I, I personally, I, I, I keep saying this, somebody needs to innovate the curbside pickup whole system because there's, there's a proper way of doing it and it's nobody's doing it right now. Um, so like every, you know, getting bad produce, having stuff swapped without really knowing what was swapped and getting home. And it's like, I don't even know what this is. Um, like yeah. there's, there's opportunity, like, and then, like even the interaction, you're you, now 
the brand's interaction with your with the consumer happens online and then there's this small window where you're actually interacting with somebody dropping your food off into your into your vehicle right nobody like what's what's that experience like it's it's probably the worst experience they just you know open the door throw it in you get home and all your groceries are piled up in the worst way possible and then your bread's flat and you're like what like this that's the experience they're leaving their consumers um anyways uh, i digress but that (laughs) just to say take notes folks yeah i mean every every like good every good product though starts with like these types of pain points, right? Yeah. So, so who knows what's going to happen with with curbside once things open up? I mean, I think curbside is going to stay. It might be different than what we expect, what we know today. But, like, anyways, I, I, my point is, there's there's opportunity out there, um, more opportunity than ever. I think just with everything happening, and 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 really, the the advice that I give everybody is just just start, um, put put some code down, launch a product, talk to a customer, and just start and and learn, and then get better and iterate and. And that's that's really how how you get things going. And and the only people that don't succeed are the ones that never actually start. So, yeah, I mean, it's every I completely agree with you, by the way, that I think uh, COVID accelerated a lot of things. But I I feel like right now people are wondering, like, oh, you know, it's probably going to go back to, quote unquote, normal or like it's, you know, some of these habits aren't here to stay. Like, how much should we really invest in them? But um, I think it fully accelerated what was already kind of inevitable. And it just like the future pulled forward faster. And a lot of these behaviors are here to stay. And I agree with you. There's it's really never been a better time to build because there's just so much happening in our industry. It's it's incredibly exciting. Um, so the, the habits will stay if we if we build a proper experience. Right. Like if right. if the experience that they're getting today is bad produce, squashed bread and whatever, like you don't trust curbside you're not going to want to continue doing that um right. you know is that is that you know I, and i think there's an opportunity there to build a, a like again curbside is just one example but the point is th- there's opportunity for these habits to definitely stay and improve now that the, before when you had to get user adoption you had to convince them that this was the better way of doing things consumers have experienced all of these new technologies now and so it's not a matter of, hey, this exists. It's a matter of, hey, this is actually a better experience than, than what you're used to um, and, and come use this over here, right? So um, I, I think it's, it's recognizing that there's just lots of ex- uh, opportunity to just improve those experiences. And um, I, I think a lot of these behaviors are going to stay for sure uh, as technology continues to support them. And it is true, like people just need to get started because I think that's the biggest, that's often the biggest hurdle in entrepreneurship. Um, I mean, on that note, would you, would you, you know, you spoke a lot about how like in entrepreneurship in general, like we all know there's a lot of pivots, there's a lot of like failure before you see success and just like getting up and continuing to try. Is there a story that comes to mind like that where something maybe didn't work out, but then it triggered something that ended up being a lot better? Like, do you have a a failure story you'd want to share that folks can learn from? Yeah. The best attribute that Bold has is our willingness to fail i I would like by far it's it's the most you know you you even look at all the products so like i said we had 36 different products on shopify um they all didn't succeed we tried we tried some we failed we failed on some we decided one of some of them just weren't growing as fast as they needed to to support the the product or the idea um we were not scared of trying things um and then from that a lot of people don't know this we actually started seven different sister companies um, oh, wow. so we, we had a Wi-Fi marketing product that we had tried, um, it didn't really have legs. So we, we kind of put a halt on that. We had this, uh, I actually, anyways, <laughs> it, it's, it, it's, it was an awesome product. It was, so we had Flocker, uh, Flocker.tv, which was, a, it was bringing e-commerce to Twitch streamers. Um, and, and we spent so much try, time trying to crack that market that we decided to fold it. But I, I like if somebody's going to do it, somebody's going to figure it out. It's a market that I think it's, it's kind of, again, talking about ideas, like that's another one that's somebody's going to figure this out. Um, we just couldn't do it. And, and we spent two years doing it and we just ended up kind of squashing it. So it's one of those things you just got to realize that. Um, and that's the other side. I think there's, there's a part of innovating is understanding, you know, what's working and you know, when, when it's not, and sometimes you don't have the right, the right idea, the right team, the right, there's a whole bunch of factors why startups fail. And sometimes it's really hard to know when that moment is, right? Like when, 
when it is time to maybe sunset a product or when something isn't working and, and that you have to pivot. I think that in itself can sometimes be a hard, a really hard thing for founders who've put a lot of energy and time into something they thought would work and then just doesn't end up being the right. An entrepreneur is always on the cusp of figuring it out, right? So we're yeah. always, <laughs> we're always almost there. Um, yeah. And I, you know what? I think with the experience that I, we have today, we probably would approach it very differently too, right? Like I think we could have, we could, there's probably a few of those ideas that if we tried it today, based on experience on, on raising capital, bringing in different talent, they probably would work, to be honest. Um, and so right. now it's now it's opportunity cost. What is that costing us to focus on that versus this? And so, you know, that's what we're always kind of, your, your only limit is time at this point. The most important thing is to focus on the most important thing. That's what Toby always says. Yeah, totally and like is. figuring out what the most important thing is, is, is a key thing that the leaders have to do, right? Yeah, so I mean, I'm proud of, you know, we, so we have all these other sister companies didn't work kickbooster.com that's uh that's another one that's going strong actually so it's uh it's crowdfunding tools it's we're 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 big into the crowdfunding space uh a lot of people don't realize that's that's a bold um sister company but um yeah check it out it's an affiliate tool for crowdfunding campaigns and uh we're helping we're helping store owners you know become successful and transition over to e-commerce once they're successful in the crowdfunding space so um just there's just so many ideas out there it's and really it is a matter of just getting going and, and proving them out. Okay. So Yvonne, I, it's been such a pleasure hearing all of your stories and having you on here. Are there any words of wisdom, uh, that you want to leave viewers with before we end off? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think I've, I've talked about a lot of it, but really for, for this, this audience, which is probably entrepreneurs, people that want to make something happen. It really starts with you just putting something down and getting it out. And, and you've got all the excuses in the world, why things don't work. Um, and you won't actually know until you start. Like I, I would say again, talking about why I feel like we were successful. I, I felt like the things that I was scared of as an entrepreneur, Jay Steffery Hick filled those gaps for me. And so if you're, if you've got a fear of failing because you're not a public person and you don't want to be doing marketing or support, like find that person that will. And, and if you find the right group where you all compliment each other, um, I think, and then from there, you'll, you'll just, you know, you'll learn, I, I, you know, worst case scenario, you learn. Um, I, yeah, I tried totally. nine different products before bold. Every one of those experiences helped me where I, for where I am today. So uh, I don't regret any of them. And it really just starts with a little bit of hustle. Yeah. I love that. Fill in your, you know, your strengths and weaknesses with the right team, get the right folks around you and just keep moving. <laughs> just keep going. I love that. Well, listen, thank you so much, Yvonne. It was like really awesome hearing your story. Again, like one of the OG partners on Shopify. You guys have been with us since the very beginning. Um, it's it's re it's been incredible to watch your success over the years uh, and can't wait to see more of it. So thanks, folks, for tuning in and uh, we'll see you next time.